Hi everyone, it's Miss Rossi. Today we're going to finish our space spheres picture. What you'll be needing today is your sketch from a couple weeks ago. We are also going to need three different colored pencils. You can use crayons, but I do think colored pencils are a little bit easier for this since we do have a lot of small spaces in here to color in. You're going to need your pencil and I have a pencil sharpener here as well just to keep my colored pencils nice and sharp as I'm coloring. A couple weeks ago we started sketching out our little optical illusion picture. So we used one point perspective by creating a vanishing point in the top corner where all of our diagonal lines are meeting. Then we have our spheres coming out from that point where the smallest one is closest to our vanishing point and the largest circle is the furthest away. So today we're going to finish our picture. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to color in our background. You want to make sure before you start coloring in your background that there is nothing drawn inside your circles. We want to leave those blank for right now. I'm going to color my background in with this blue colored pencil and we're going to create a pattern as we're coloring in the background. So we already have almost like a checkered board design of all of these little squares. So we're going to color it in to create a little pattern where we're going to skip over every other box. So I would color in this first one, so I'm just going to mark it so it's easier for me to see once I start to color. I'd skip that one, I'd color this one, skip the next one, color this one, and skip that one. Now when I move up to this next row, I don't want to color in this same box because I colored in the one below. So I'm going to skip that one and color it in so now my pattern is alternating horizontally and vertically. So I am skipping over one, coloring it in, and now this box, I can see the top and I can see the bottom. The rest of it is behind that circle, so I'm just going to mark both of those corners so I remember. And then I have a teeny tiny little corner right there that I can color in. And now going back up here, I'm going to color in this one, skip, I would color in this little corner, then skip this one, color, skip, color, skip. And back up here, skip it, color it, skip it, color it, skip it, color it, all the way down. And now I have some really, really tiny ones in here, so it kind of gets a little confusing. So just try your best. It's okay if it's not totally perfect. And try and see where those lines match up with your other boxes. So this skinny piece up here is going behind my circle and it's popping out on this end. So I know both of those pieces, again, are going to get colored in. I'm going to skip both of those, and color in this one, and then I'll skip that final top piece. With my eraser, I'm just going to erase these really big dots that I drew before when we were sketching this out. And I will just fix those lines that I erased a little bit as I was doing that. We don't need the dot there, but we do still want those guidelines to show where we're coloring. Now that I have everything marked out, I can actually start to color in each section. So as we're coloring today, we want to color neatly inside of each box. I think it is easiest if you do almost like a cross hatching technique where you color in fully in one direction, nice and lightly. So I am coloring in, moving my pencil horizontally back and forth from left to right, filling in the entire space. And then to just darken it, I'm going to go back over it using a cross hatching technique where now I'm coloring on top the opposite direction. So instead of coloring going left to right, I'm coloring going up and down. It gives us a very full looking color where the whole section is colored in completely and there is no white space that is left. There we go. So I'm going to do that in each of my marked boxes to fully color in my background.
And that is what my background looks like all finished. So I was able to create a pattern of blue, white, blue, white throughout my background. And I used a cross hatching technique to color in each box. So they are fully colored in nice and neatly and they don't have any white space. Now, if you made any mistakes, colored pencil is pretty easy to erase as long as you're not pushing too hard with it. So you can go around and try and clean up any of those little spaces. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a design inside our circles to turn them into spheres. So I'm going to start by drawing a dot at the top and a dot at the bottom, kind of like in the center of my circles on the edge. I'm going to do the same thing on the sides and I am going to draw a straight line to connect my dots, which is just going to split my circle in half. Now I'm going to draw a curved line from the top to the bottom. And I'm going to do another one. So I have a straight line and then two curves. I'm going to do the same thing on this side where I'm drawing a curve. And then that second curve, I just kind of want to split the rest of that space in half with. So I'm left with some even looking sections. If they're not perfectly even, that's okay. But you should have all these almost like little banana sections where they're pointy on the ends and curved around the center. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my dots on the sides. So I'm going to draw a line going right through, splitting my circle in half. And now I'm going to draw a curve going up and connecting and then a second curve going up and connecting back down. And I'm going to do the same thing along the bottom with two more big curves. Now we were able to create a really interesting pattern on our circles to make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. So the way that your lines are curving now makes our flat circle look like it's taking up more space and kind of coming out off of the page a little bit more than when it was just empty on the inside. I'm going to do that same design in all of my circles. So I'm starting with those dots, one on the top and one on the bottom. I'm going to split it in half and draw my two curving lines coming out in that space. I'm doing the same thing on the right side. And then two more dots on the left and on the right, splitting it in half and a curve going up and another curve and two more down below. You just wanna make sure your curves are hitting both of your dots. So I don't wanna draw a curve that comes down to the side like that because it's not going to create the same effect. It should go from the one dot all the way back to the other. And now with my last two colors of my colored pencils that I chose, I am going to color in my spheres. So I have purple and green here. I'm going to start with my purple. And just like I did in the background, I'm going to mark off in my circle where my purple is going to be. And I'm going to mark off where my green is going to be so that I can color them in to create an alternating pattern. I'm going to start with my purple and I'm looking at this bottom row first. And I'm just marking off every other section with my purple colored pencil. I'm going to move up to the next row, leave that one blank, and mark off the other ones. So again, it's alternating horizontally from left to right, where we are skipping one each time. And now I'm also skipping one as I'm moving up. So there is never the same color next to itself. So you can now see my pattern is starting purple, white, purple, and then the next one is white. So I know we got purple again and I can just mark all of those off carefully. And then just to make sure it's going to work, I'm just going to take my green and mark that in all of my white spaces to make sure that our pattern is alternating the way that I want it to. And before I start to color, I'm just going to check it one last time and make sure that it looks good. So I have purple, green, purple, green, purple, green, Green, purple, green, purple, green, purple, purple, green, purple, green, purple, green, all the way through. That looks good. And now I am just going to color in each section. Now for this, since all of our sections aren't these like squares or rhombuses like our background was, 
I do think it's a little easier if I trace that section that I'm going to color in and then fill it in. And I'm not going to cross hatch on this, I'm just going to fill it in as best as I can. Again, since the shapes are a little bit different each time and the sections are a lot smaller, I think this is a little bit easier. So I'm just going to go in and color in all of my purple spaces and then I will go in with my green to color the rest of those in. And that's what my first sphere looks like all colored in. I'm going to go in and mark the other two and color those in with my purple and green color pencil the same way where I am going to create a pattern by alternating my colors inside each box. I'm marking them first so I don't make a mistake and I'm going to double check it a few times before I start to color it in. And that is my Optical Illusion 3D Spheres picture all finished. Once you're done coloring in your project, you can upload a photo or video of it on my Canvas page. I can't wait to see how your drawings have turned out. Try your best, have fun, and get creative. I'll see you soon. Bye!